Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fishing Bear and Sea. Tonight we're going to do a tutorial on, well, the basics of the game. Uh, we're going to take a look at how to play the game, maybe some tips on um, where I think you should go as far as your money and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and start a new career. Yeah, Nielsen, that's good enough. And we're going to start in Hammerfest. Let's go. Now, when we get into the game, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of information that we need to go over. Um, and a bunch of buttons and things that you can click on. So, what we have here is the port of Hammerfest. And you'll notice that the port is outlined in a purpley outline. Uh, of note, also, if we go on to our map on the keep on the... Uh, I think on the video game systems, it's the select key, or on the Nintendo Switch, it's the minus key. And you can zoom out and see that there's several ports on the game. We have a port here. There's a port up here, way up north. Another one over here. Uh, these are undiscovered right now. Also to our south is a port. There's a port here. There's one across the bay there underneath the fish population sign right here. But... Uh, and then also right across the bay from us is the Hammerfest Market. Rumor says that you get more money if you sell your fish there. Uh, but Hammerfest itself is the main port. One thing that Hammerfest has that none of the other ports have is a ship purchasing facility. So this is where you're going to buy all the boats and ships that you want to own. Um, and any of the other places, all the other places have fuel. They all have repair. They all can re... Um, can work on your nets or your fishing lines, but none of them have ships aside from Hammerfest, so that is the main port. Um, let's go back out of the map here, but I just wanted to show you that. Oh, also, while we're in here, you'll notice that you have kind of a sphere of exploration here. The blue waters are waters where you can actually go into your fish population and see where the fishing is hot. Obviously, the brighter the color, the hotter the fishing. These areas really don't have much fish in them at all. These areas are hot spots. Now, you need to be careful. If you overfish these, they will eventually disappear. And you have to wait until next year for them to start coming back again, or maybe never. So be careful not to overfish. You want these to remain healthy so that you have fish to work with. You can see here, you can turn off and see different species. So there's a lot of king crab in the south. There's not a whole lot of cod at all, except for maybe here where these boats are. A lot of haddock in this area. A lot of pollock right there. And let's see, the redfish population is really hot right here. So, when I catch redfish, this is where to go. I usually kind of just do an all-species thing. When you're when you're line or net fishing, you can't be super particular, but you can kind of pick your... Uh, for the line fishing, you can pick different uh, bait that calls different kind of fish, so or lures different kind of fish. So, uh, let's go ahead back out. Uh... So the first thing you're going to notice is the, the buttons and all the different icons on the screen. Now, for Nintendo users and Xbox users, they're in different places than they are here. Uh, I have, obviously, a PC, so we're playing on the PC version. But they all have the same buttons. They're just in different locations. The buttons do look the same, so that should be helpful to you. Um, I've noticed the only thing that's really different on the Switch, uh, over here where the compass is, where it says west, north, east, south, and you have a picture of your boat, this is all white on the Switch for some reason. Um, but other than that, they are pretty much identical. I know on the Switch also, the map is up on the top. Uh, all the information is just in different places. But it's the same information. Everybody has the same. So if you're playing on the console uh, or on the Switch, these tutorials apply to you also. Um, so first of all, let's take a look at the buttons at the bottom left on my computer. But these will be scattered for you on the Switch uh, and also for the Xbox users. We have the net section. This is our gear section. We can open and close it. Uh, this is to set gear. So if you have a line fishing ship, when you press that, he'll throw the line out the back of the boat. And uh, there's a little mini game that you have to complete. For the line, it's really easy. You just keep the boat in a straight line. Same with the nets. But the nets, you really have to keep it in a straight line or you'll damage the net. Uh, this is what you, once, the, once you've had the fishing line out for a while, and we'll go over all that, uh, you're going to pick it up using this button. The, but we have no nothing to pick up right now. And then you have to hand gut the fish early on. Later in the game, you can get machinery that does it for you or hire crew members to do it for you. But on the Borga, which is the starting boat, you are going to be doing it by hand, and I'll teach you how to do that. Um, this is going to be a long tutorial, so get your popcorn out, just by the way. Um, second here, we have the lighting section. Basically, we just have light controls. You can turn the interior lights on and off. 
And they actually do work. If you go inside the boat, you can see the interior lights turning on and off. Hang on, let me... Where are they in here? We actually do have... Oops! <laughs> functional... E. Yeah, it has functional interior lights, believe it or not. So let's go back outside. Um, you have running lights so ships can see you at nighttime. You have a searchlight that I hate. I never use it. Uh, and then we have working lights that light up, light up the deck, and you can see here, even in the daytime, the deck gets lit up. See that? I'm looking, we're looking at the back here of the boat. Watch. Light. So that's the light section. Down here we have our GPS, which is already up. That shows us where we are on the map. Now, on the PC version, you can zoom out and zoom in. I don't think you can on the... I'm pretty sure you can on the Switch, because I played it on the Switch. You can't do it on the Switch. Um, you also have a sonar that shows you how many fish are swimming underneath you and how deep the water is below you. Right now, the water, the bottom of the ocean is 50 meters below us, and there's no fish. This shows a lot of information, the fish tab. Um, this shows us how many fish we have on board. And this is not a big deal for this boat because we really have a small boat here. But as you get into the bigger ships, it's good to know how many fish you have, how long they've been in there. Because if you've had them in there for four or five days and haven't come back to port to sell them, they start going bad. And the price drops. So you need to, you know, make sure that after you have four or five day old fish, you get them back. If they're frozen, you can stay out there longer. Later in the game, you'll get ships that can freeze them. But uh, you have to keep that. You have to watch that. This tells you fish, uh, your gutting scores uh, as you do the gutting. And let me tell you, on the Nintendo, it's rough, okay? The Switch is rough to gut. I don't know how hard it is on the Xbox. It's probably a little bit easier. But the Nintendo Switch with the little tiny Joy-Con controller... It's difficult to gut fish at anything above three stars. Um, the way the gutting works, if you do a really crappy job, you get 30% off the price of the fish, which sucks. If you do okay and get two stars, it's negative 10%. And then if you do a three-star job, it's plus 10%. Four-star job is plus 30. And you get a 50% bonus if you're four stars or above. So you get into the five-star range. That's where you want to be. Um, Anyway, that's that. We'll we'll go over the the game once again. We're getting ahead of ourselves here, but we'll we'll I'll show you the gutting mechanism, and you'll get to see what I'm talking about. We'll come back here when we actually have fish on the boat, and we'll look at this. Um, quotas: You're only allowed to catch so many fish a year with each boat, um, and that goes by species. So you have a very strict limit on this boat of redfish. Some other boats have a stricter limit on cod. Um, some boats are stricter on pollock. But you have to, you know, kind of play by the rules. And once those get filled, you can purchase upgrades to your quotas. So you can buy another license and extend your quota out up to 60% larger quotas. So if you're just running one boat and you want to extend the season out, um, you can buy more space. But it's very expensive, like 2 million krona. It's going to be very expensive to do that, so it's probably not worth it. But you might just want to buy another boat at that point. Um, and then just keep running that one until it runs out of quota. And by that time, you'll have made enough money to buy the next boat. Um, and then cargo. This just shows you if you're carrying a cargo for, like, they have some missions on here, and we'll go into that in a little bit. You can deliver fish to boats or deliver certain types of fish to ports, and you actually get m extra money for that. They'll, they'll pay you, like, an increased rate for those fish. So that's what the cargo button does. Next up, we have the line info. This is a very important one, and you'll see why especially for you Switch users. It's not as important for you uh, guys that are on the PC or Xbox, but for Switch users, this is super important. This shows you how many uh, lines you have on the boat currently and how many are deployed, and it will also show you the important part, how long those lines have been deployed for. And we'll get to that. Here we have our weather forecast. Eh, weather doesn't affect too much in the game aside from the size of waves. Uh, if you have a very wavy day and you're planning on going out and collecting crab pots on the big crabbing boat, you're going to have a nightmare ahead of you. If it's windy, the boat's going to drift, it's going to blow in the wind, and you're going to be bouncing all over the place, and it's really hard to get those crab pots, and you have to do 50 crab pots on that big boat, uh, and it's going to hurt you <laughs> physically <laughs> with mouse and keyboard or whatever you're playing to do it. But uh, that lets you know the weather coming up. Still, you still need to, you know, if you might want to, if you're going to lay down pots and you can see this going to be real windy for the next couple of days, you might want to wait before you go out and fish uh, with that boat. So that just gives you some ideas of how to deal with the weather but they do give you a nice, like, five-day forecast. This is a radio that you can click on it to call for rescue. At a service fee, they'll come out and rescue some of the boats. You can purchase insurance. It reduces the fee or makes it nil. So uh, let me click that to turn that off so it comes on and off. If you have a ship that has crew members, and we'll go over that later, um, 
you can click on the crew member button, boop, and it'll be right here or somewhere in this area. Uh, and then you can actually assign crew members to different tasks. We'll go over that later once again when we get to the crew member section. That probably will be in the next video. Um, today we're just going to kind of go over the basics with the small boat, and then we'll do like a second video with larger boats and then, you know, dealing with crew members and all that stuff because um, there's just so much to cover. Up here you have your main menu. You can save and load your game, and you have other options, obviously, sound and all that good stuff. We have a wiki. This is kind of an important thing. I would read through these. Um, you have certificates. You can only use the small boat until you get a junior certificate, which I'm, I'm on junior now. Um, senior allows you to drive bigger boats like the Vibiki, um, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Like right now, I, since I'm brand new, I can only run this boat and maybe like one or two other boats. But as you run kilometers, you get upgraded and you can actually get bigger ships and boats. The logbook shows you what date it is. It also shows you line by line the types of fish that you caught, how much money you made for them. It shows the events. This is important, sort of. Um... So we have low haddock demand. In summer, the demand for haddock is significantly lower. Prices are down. The mackerel population is booming at the moment. Go trawling. We don't have a trawler yet. That would be like the lunar bow. Uh, you'll see that ship later in the game. Haddock season has just started. So we can ignore this message because now that it's August, which it is August 15th, the local government wants to increase production at local fisheries. Haddock prices have risen 20 krona. Yes, so they're up. Uh, shows you what jobs you got. Anyway, this is your your kind of your. And this shows you the certs too. I'm I'm on the amateur tiny vessel because uh, I have done no jobs yet in anything. So we got to sail this boat around, and we'll get the next license. All right. So now we've covered all the things on the screen. The next button you'll see here is this flashing dock at Hammerfest. Whenever you're in one of these purple areas, it'll allow you to dock at the nearest dock, and you just click that button. And now we're in port. Now the port gives us a couple different options down on the bottom right. Hammerfest is unique in that with most of them when you click this, all you'll get is the maintenance and the upgrades. Actually maintenance on most of the uh, places around here. You can't buy upgrades except for here in Hammerfest. Um, so that's another thing. You can only upgrade the boat in Hammerfest, which can be a pain. But, uh, and then we can also purchase boats here in Hammerfest. Once again, the other ports don't have that. And here we can see all of the different information about our ship and all the other ships that are available. Uh, I would recommend to you, this is going to be a big recommendation here and probably one of the most important parts of the tutorial. If you're playing the complete edition on console or... And with that, I lost my train of thought. Oh, well, um, this is the uh, information screen here about the boat that we own. It's 10,000 krona, really cheap. You can't sell your boats, by the way. Once you own them, you own them. Um, 24 foot, 2,500 kilograms, no crew, so you're by yourself on this boat. Um, oh, that's right. We were talking about getting to the next boat. I would recommend if you have the uh, Complete Edition or the King, the King Crab DLC, the Selfie is the boat that you want. Um, why do I say the Selfie? Because, first of all, it allows you to have another crew member, so you, ha you get help on the boat. Uh, though you don't need him if you're doing crabs, but it allows you to do crabbing and long lines and nets. So this is a very flexible boat and it allows you to do three different types of all three different types of fishing that are in the game. So I recommend this and the price is good at 450,000 krona. It's actually the next cheapest ship <laughs> aside, I think, from the Yazzie. The Yazzie is 180 krona, but the Yazzie is not really unless you're into sport fishing. That's not a great money maker. Um, but the selfie is what I recommend. That's where I was going. Uh, now, it does have a very small king crab quota. You're going to run maybe two or three times out there, and you're going to run out. So you, this ship, you might want to upgrade the quotas, but that's up to you. Um, another good ship of, of uh, not uh, notoriety at lower prices is the uh, Fulabun, which allows for two crew members. So if you want to train crew members on gutting and also on bringing nets in and stuff like that, they can do all the work for you, and you just have to drive the ship. So this is a cool ship to kind of learn how to do crew management. We'll get there, folks. I know you're like, crew management? What are you talking about? Once again, we talked about the Vibiki 
This requires a, a higher license. There's the big 50 crabber that I was talking about. Anyway, that's gives you an idea. But for now, you're stuck with this little crappy boat. <laughs> Let's go back to the shop again. This time we're going to look at upgrades. This is uh, an interesting thing here. Um, every boat in the game has three upgrades available for storage and engine. Um, and you have to purchase them in order. You can't just go to the third upgrade and buy it. You have to do the first upgrade, the second upgrade, and then the third upgrade, which gets very costly very quickly. Uh, same with the engine. You can't just upgrade to engine upgrade three. You've got to do one and two also to get the three. Why would you need to upgrade your engine? Well, if you upgrade your capacity, these boats gets, get really slow when they're full of fish. If you've got 6,000 liters or kilograms of fish on your ship and you only got the original engine, the ship's going to crawl at about one or two kilometers per hour, and it's going to take you like six years to get back to port. So I would highly recommend that you um, match them up. If you're going to do one, like storage one, do engine upgrade one. Here's another little trick that you need to know. If we go back to the shipyard and we look here, you'll notice that nowhere in this general information from the boat, or any of the boats for that matter, it doesn't tell you anywhere how much weight or how many kilograms of fish the boat will actually carry. So the way that you find this out is you go to the upgrade center where we were, and you look at this last upgrade. You can see if I do storage upgrade 3, it gives me 3,000 kilograms of fish. Extra. This will always be double what's on your boat. So if your boat has 3,000, that means that the boat, when fully upgraded, can hold 6,000. Uh, right now, that means also that this boat has, you guessed it, 3,000. So I can carry 3,000 kilograms unupgraded. Once I upgrade it all the way, I can double that and carry 6,000 total. So... That's how that works. So just so you know, if you ever need to check out the storage capacity or you want to know what the capacity is, look at the top upgrade and multiply that by two. So if this is 3,000, then it'll hold six fully upgraded. Once again, horsepower upgrades. They all cost the same, but, well, it depends. On some of the bigger ships, they're really expensive. Um, but on these smaller boats, they're about the same. However, the horsepower you get is different. So like on this boat, the Borga, it gives you a 12 horsepower upgrade max. Um, anyway, the funny thing about the engine upgrades is that, like for the Borga, it's 12. For the Selfie, or the Selfa, the engine, I believe the, the final engine horsepower upgrade is like 450 horsepower. <laughs> it costs almost the same, but it gets you way more horsepower, and that just that's how they did it. That boat will go ridiculously fast when it's upgraded all the way. Now, when it's full... It's a lot slower, but that horsepower makes it that you travel faster, you know, overall, um, full and empty. Uh, though sometimes the top speed is the top speed. So, like with this boat, if I upgrade it 10 horsepower, it's going to, or 12 horsepower, it's going to run a little bit faster than it does now, but not much. The difference will be when the chip is loaded, it still will keep up a higher speed. Now, we talked about radar in the map. Right now, we have no radar on the ship. Some of the other ships will have double radar upgrades, triple radar upgrades. Um, the more expense that you put into the radar upgrade, the more vision that you'll have around your boat. So as you go out on the map and the places that you haven't explored before, that it'll start to unlock the map and you'll see blue in those spots where you've been, where you go with this radar. Um, it's, it's really not worth it until you get to your next boat because this one is so small that it's almost like just as wide as the ship. So you'll get this like tiny blue line around the boat as you make new marks on the map. You want to wait till you get a larger ship with a bigger influence, and then it'll actually start really unlocking the map for you, and you'll be able to see a lot further and see where the fish are all over the map. Uh, but I would wait until you get into at least the Selfa, if not the... Yeah, probably the Selfa, because the Selfa has got a much larger tank, and it's going to go a lot further. So... Um, Anyway, once again, you don't have to go through all this stuff when you first start the game, but I figured I'd help you guys kind of understand how the game works and, and things that you will do. These are the fishing quotas that I talked about. You can see in this boat, upgrading for a 30% increase is a million krona. It's probably not worth it. That's a lot of krona. Uh, on a larger boat, this may be worth it. Like, I would say definitely worth it on 
the Lunar Bow, because the Lunar Bow is going to bring you, uh, during season when it's available, it's going to bring you 17 to, I want to say, 20 million krona a month. It's going to bring you a lot of money, so you may want to upgrade that, but some of the smaller boats, that's not worth it. Um, you just might as well, in fact, you might as well buy a new boat. At a million krona, you can buy another, you could buy the the, the selfie or the, the, sh the Sharkin or... Uh, uh, Toby, any of those boats you can buy for less than a million dollars. So you can expand your quota by just buying another boat. Then next year you have two boats to work with, you know. <laughs> so just think of it that way. Uh, the mast upgrades, I'm not sure what these do. Um, they must do something, but I don't know what they do, uh, aside from look pretty. Um, I don't think they give you... A, maybe they give you further radar, ro um, ro 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 radio range. But you don't really radio anything anyway, so I don't know. Uh, last but not least, let's go ahead and get ready to set out to sea here. We have, you have a couple things that we need to do um, as we look at this. So we've looked at the dock. This is the town. In the town we have people for hire. Uh, and you can see here each person, these are crew members. Now we're not going to hire anybody right now because we don't have any crew member slots on the ship. Um, but we will eventually have boats that have crew member slots or ships that have crew member slots. So we'll need to hire some of these people. Um, now, they are trainable, so as you run these people and they do their tasks, they level up on those tasks. If I take care, who, look, if, if you look here at Care, he's got a pretty good long, haul, long line hauling rating. So he's pretty good at pulling the line up and getting a good score as he pulls the fish into the boat. Now, you'll, learn, you'll see me doing that, and you'll see what that means. Um, but Care is good at doing that. Um, so you may want to hire him on your first boat and have him do the hauling of the long lines. He can also repair the boat. He can hand gut. He's good at that. He's good at pot and bait setting on the larger uh, um, king crab ship. Um, he can also haul nets. He can sort crabs. He can gut machines. He can operate the crane for that's for once again the crane is for the king crab. Um, he's good at stacking, freezing, and cooking. And then once again we have stacking and freezing are things that you do on the bigger ships. And you can also tell here he's got a uh, maximum stamina of 5. That will also go up. Every time they level up, this strength goes up. And he will eventually have a very large bar of health, and he can stay on working on the boat for hours on end without getting tired. And when they get tired, they go back in, they have to rest for a couple hours. So um, you want to look for guys that are pretty tough. We have uh, Donald Trump here. I mean, Dan Trump. Uh, he's not very good at anything. A bit like Donald Trump. Hey, no politics. Uh, anyway, and we have Victoria. And Ruth, these two people are also available, and um, so that's who's available at this port. Now, there's other people aboard are available at other ports. Okay, so you don't have to just use the ports here. There are some ships in the game, like the like the uh, crabbing vessel, the larger one, uh, the Svalbard, that require eight crew members, and you really need eight, eight crew members on that ship. So you'll need more than just the four people that are here. Um, Anyway, they have a higher price. This is the rate that you pay them. They, they charge you this much to hire them, 24,000 krona. And then once they're hired, you also they, you pay them 1.8% of your income. It's fine. Believe me, these people help you make money. They're worth it. Okay. Once you've got them hired, you can either fire them or you can, when you're using a smaller boat and you don't need them, you can send them to the crew house. You pay for them to be at the crew house on monthly fee, but you don't lose your people that way. And I think it's worth keeping your crew because your crew, you know, it takes them a long time to train up, but once they're trained up, they do a good job, and you don't want to lose that. The next tab we have is the bank. Here you can take out loans. Now, these amounts go up as you get to be better. Um, the higher your reputation goes, the more experience you have, the more money you have, the higher the loan goes. The grand irony is that the longer the loan is, the higher the interest rate. This is one of those things that doesn't make financial sense in the game. In real life, if you take out a big loan and you do it over a long period of time, the interest rate is lower than if you take out a small loan and do it over a short period of time. So, But here's the opposite. So your, your biggest loan is also your most expensive loan with an interest rate of 20%. What I would recommend doing is... Um, Running the Borga for a little while. Don't do too many upgrades to it. To be honest with you, maybe level 1 engine and level 1 capacity upgrade. Don't bother with the radar yet. The radar is not too expensive. Um, you will probably make about twenty-six to 27,000 krona per haul of fish. 
uh, with its stock. If you do those first two upgrades, you're going to bring that up to maybe like 40,000 krona. If you do a good job gutting your fish. If you don't do a good job gutting your fish, it's going to be less. <laughs> Trust me. On the Switch and the uh, Xbox, it's really hard to gut the fish. But my recommendation is you run this boat until you're at about 250, maybe 250. Uh, at 250,000 krona, you then take out a loan for two to three hundred thousand dollars, and you buy yourself the Salfa. You hire a crew member, and you actually don't even hire the crew member. You run King Crab until you've gotten some money in using the King Crab, and then. Hire creamer. That's that would be my recommended path. So, uh, don't take a loan out yet. You don't need it. Don't buy anything extra for the boat yet. You don't need it. You can start upgrading later when you get a bigger boat. That's going to make you more money per haul because you'll be able to upgrade it a lot faster. But right now, money is going to be tight. So, don't uh, don't take a loan out yet. Wait wait for it. And the loans once again they'll get bigger too the longer you wait. Next up, the bar. There's no jobs at the bar, but this is where Swarthy component. <laughs> companions hang out uh, you can have pick up jobs at the bar different ports have different jobs and then um, let's see we have also the boat services hang on I got a question we have boat services um, this is where you can get your unlimited free towing for 10,000 krona per year I've been playing this game for a year and a half I've only had to tow a boat once I got the lunar bow stuck on a reef I did not see it. It was uh, I was running alongside close to a, a mountainside, but I wasn't on the shore, but I didn't see the bottom of the ocean came up, and I actually got stuck on a reef, and I had to get towed out. So occasionally you can get unlimited free towing from them. Uh, right now we have no rescue service. I don't think for the smaller boats you really need to do this, but for some of the larger ones I would maybe consider getting it because it's pretty cheap. 10,000 krona is literally like 1% of 1% of 1% of what you're going to bring in with those bigger boats. So... Uh, you're, you're bringing in millions a year, so 10,000 krona is like a penny. Um, so that does it for the Hammerfest um, town. Uh, now we need to take a look at the fish, fishy market. A couple important things here. First of all, we can see the price of fish. Don't forget they said haddock is up. Haddock is the silver sparkly fish that's kind of bluish silver. We have cod, that's the brown fish. That's how I try to remember these. Obviously redfish is redfish, and pollock is... Silver, okay? You can bait your lines. This is a line ship. If you have nets, you can't do anything about being particular. But if you have a, if you're doing lines like we are with this boat, we can actually aim for certain kind of fish. So right now, haddock is the hot fish. We want to aim for a haddock. So let's take a look at our, our baits. We have, um, hang on one second, folks. I'm having a hard time figuring out how to do this part of it. Mackerel is what you catch with, uh, the lunar bow, by the way. Um, and obviously king crab you catch with the sulfa or the svalbard. Uh, but let's look at our line. So this part gets a little bit technical here. Um, and I've already had questions in my first video saying that it was on the console. People not understanding how to use this interface. Uh, it'll look a little bit different on the Switch and the Xbox, but the icons are the same. So this part should be, the, aside from the menu being different, these icons are the same. You're going to click on the hook. And what we're looking at right now is how many long lines we have. Now, as a stock boat, uh, the Borga carries roughly one 500 length worth of fish. Unless you have a crappy catch, then you might do like 600 or 700 feet. You can't buy that line. So what I do is I'll buy, I keep the two 250s that I already have. And you can see here, these are the different lengths. We have a 250 meter. 500 meter and 1,000 meter. Now, if I were to upgrade the Borga all the way, I'd be running two 1,000 meter lines, one at a time. But we're not. So I'm going to have 750 meters of line every time I cast. So uh, you can see here we got two 250s. We've got zero 500s and zero. That little number at the top shows you how many of each net you have. I've only got two 250s. I've got zero 500s. I'm going to add two 500s. So... I can't afford the second one. Ooh, ouch, bad. So we're going to add one 500 for now. We'll get the next one after we come in because we're going to catch $27,000 worth of, wow, zero krona? What? Uh, I taught you bad. So don't do that. 
Okay, we've killed all of our Krona. I spent 10,000 Krona and I can't use it. Um, I didn't realize that these were so expensive. So we're going to have to wait till we have a little bit of money to buy those. Right now we have two 250s, so we're just going to run with that. Uh, we're going to put both lines out. And I'm going to show you how to do rotational fishing. Um, the goal is to have four lines on the ship. When you go out, you're going to put two of them in the water. Uh, you're going to wait until those lines are ready to pull. You're going to pull those lines and catch the fish and then put the next two lines out and come back to port to sell the fish and rebate the lines. While the, When I say rebate, I don't mean get your money back. I mean re-put more bait on those lines, okay? Um, you're going to go and then back out again, collect the lines that have been out there, and put the newly baited lines out, bring those lines back, rebate those, and sell the fish. So that way it's every... 18 or you know 12 to 18 hours you're selling fish um otherwise you're going to have to you know come into port you know or i'm sorry go out you're gonna have to set the lines come back in and wait go back out catch the fish come back in and sell them rebate the lines and go back out again you'll be making four trips you're gonna be waiting and waiting and waiting this way every time you go out you're doing something so i'm going to teach you how to do that um in this video and that's where we're going now so let's go ahead and get underway um so i'm going to take these two lines that i have that are 250 and we're going to throw some bait. Once again, we want to catch more of the um, bluish silver fish. So this one catches not very many. This one catches a decent amount. And that's, I think, haddock is what we call it. Uh, this one catches even more haddock, and this one catches less haddock. So it looks like the mackerel is the best for what we're doing. And actually, mackerel is kind of a good all-rounder, though. It does catch more pollock. So you kind of got to watch. Um... In fact, I would even maybe mix it up a little bit since both of these are similar. I would do one with mackerel, and then I would do the other line with um, crab. And that way we're going to pull in a nice even amount of all kinds of fish. Uh, that will keep our quota so that we're not just getting one type of fish and, and filling up the quota. But we do want a decent amount of haddock because that's what is hot right now. So let's go ahead and we're going we're gonna to back out here. So the last thing that we can do in here before we take off, uh, we have the weather forecast in the map, and then we can skip time. This is important later on because what happens is those lines need to sit out in the water for about 18 hours before you pull them out. Well, you can just sit out there. In in-game, 18 hours is like almost an hour of time. So you can just sit out there and wait, or you can come back to port and skip time and, and fast forward and then get back out there again. So let's we'll, I'll show you how to do that too. So let's go ahead... We're going to click the Go Fishing button. So now we're in control of our boat. And let's go ahead and start making our way out of port. Once again, we're going to look at the map once we get away from the dock here. And I'm going to run the limit here, if you want to play it simulistically, uh, is about six knots is the speed limit until you get past that break wall there. So if you want to play realistically, you want to keep it under six knots. While we're sailing, let's take a look around the ship. Um, each ship or boat has different places that you can go, different things that you can do. Um, and they all have the same kind of setup, though. You have a throttle, which is over here on the right. You've got your steering wheel. You've got your light controls, which turn the lights on off. And they look the same in all the ships. You've got a horn button. You can press that. And, uh, this is a uh, storage meter. shows right here that we have 3,000 kilograms free. Um, that's another way to find out how much your ship holds. And as you fill this up, you'll get some bars showing that the ship is full. Red bars mean that they're ungutted fish. Yellow bars mean that they're gutted. Um, we're not going to have any fish yet, though, because we need to set the lines. Over here is our GPS. This is the smallest one. As you get bigger boats, you get bigger GPSs. Some boats even have head-up displays. Now, you can jump, jump out of the driver's seat by pressing, well, F in the game and on the PC, but it's different for the consoles. I can go downstairs and hang out. I can light a fire. It's cold. Get warmed up. <laughs> this is the Borga. Each boat is different. Most of them don't have fireplaces, but the Borga does. Uh, we can also go outside. I don't want to cast my lines yet, but we could. Just You can pick the lines. I think they're underneath here. Yep. I can press E, and it'll throw the gear out, but I don't want to do that yet. We want to get away from the port. You can also drive the boat from back here. If I change camera angles, you can see I'm standing on the back, and he's steering from there. So that gives you an idea of the different things you can do on each boat. And obviously, the bigger the boat, the more you can walk around. Some boats are very limited to how much you can walk around. Some are, like, really well done, and you can walk all over the place. But uh, So we're going to set a waypoint here on the map, 
And I'm going to go there. Now, be aware, when you fast travel using this method, it burns up 50% more gas. So fast traveling is very inefficient. However, it does get you there faster, and that's what we're going to do. you got to watch on some of, the, some of the boats. They actually run out of gas when you fast travel. So you got to really watch. Like they just they, they eat up the gas in like one trip. So you just got to be careful. Hang on, folks. Okay, so we fast traveled and we are now in the the blue zone. We're not gonna catch a ton of fish here, but we really want it to be green or brighter. So I'm gonna turn into the zone here. We know it's to our right. When I was looking at the map, I was facing the wrong way, so now I'm facing the right way. Once again, looking at the map, I should be driving right into it. Yes, I am. So I'm going into the the heart of the blue zone. And I'm going to go ahead and drop a bait. So we have two 250 lines, one with mackerel and one with crab. Let's drop the mackerel one first. I click on that button, and he just does it. He'll automatically set the speed to the right speed, and the net just pops out. Or line, I'm sorry, not net. Boop. And that's it. <laughs> that line is set. And now we got to wait till we're 50 meters away, and we can jump our or dump our next net. Old Fisherman Joe is letting me down, arg. Now, these mountains do get all covered with snow in the winter. It's pretty cool. And sometimes the ships crash and get stuck, so. All right, now we're going to drop the line with the crab on it so it'll catch a little bit different kind of fish. And that's it. Between those two lines, we should have a full haul um, coming back, so. Ooh, one thing I did f fail to talk about, and we'll look at this when we go back into port. Um, you can upgrade your fishermen, too. So if you plan on doing a lot of line fishing, you can actually do some upgrades, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, we want to go north here. I'm going to put this up here. I'm going to fast travel back to port. Yes, it does take... Remember to get gas when you get into port. Here he comes. Okay, now, we know we let those lines out. Let's see how long it took us. It took us two hours and 33 minutes to get back to port. We need to remember that because we need to come back here before they hit 18 hours. So right now they're two hours and 33 minutes old. That gives us some time. We're going to fast forward time, and you'll see how I do this. Unfortunately, you can only fast forward time when you're in port. I know some of you have that question, but there you go. So you cannot fast forward time from the map. You have to do it when you're in port. Oh, look at the fire coming out. My boat's on fire. There's flame everywhere. <laughs> All right, so we're going to click the port button. We're docking at Hammerfest. Great job boating there. That was pretty sweet. Some sweet docking action going on. Uh, All right, so let's take a look here in town. And we are going to show you with this here. I forgot about this thing. Um, where is it? Uh, inventory, that's what we want. So we have the long line thing, we have the fish prices. I forgot about the inventory. Now, little cheater tools, but they're very expensive. Um, you have a fish whacker. Um, you start off with the wooden fish whacker, uh, and you whack the fish as they come up the line. You'll see, you'll see me do the mini game here when we go back out to catch the fish. Using different whackers give you better results. So the fish get bigger with the bigger whacker. <laughs> We have a bronze and mahogany whacker for 200,000 krona. Ouch! But it gives you 8% bigger fish, which means you fill up faster and you do a better job. They are worthwhile. Now, the nice thing is, unlike the upgrades, you don't have to buy these in order. You can just click on bronze and mahogany and buy it. I would just wait till you can get that one because that's the best one. Uh, though aluminum is a good bang for the buck because you're, you know, you're doubling the price, tripling the price for 2% more. Uh, so this is a good one to buy, too, if you don't want to wait. Same thing with gutting. Uh, you get a 0% bonus with a wooden knife. Now, I do pretty good, but having a Singa gutting knife will get you 8% better gutting. So if you're going to be doing a lot of line fishing and not getting to the bigger ships, you may want to upgrade these as you make more money. Once again, don't be afraid. Once you get the Sulfa or the Sharkin or any of those two-man boats, um, you're going to bring in about $200,000 every time you come into port. So um, it'll be easy to buy these items once you get up to those larger, better ships. Uh, but at first, when you, I know it's a bit of a grind. Now, for me, I just keep the old 2X Zoom. Sometimes I'll buy the 4X, but 
the, the 16 hex, I can't even see what I'm doing with these. These are your binoculars. I don't ever use binoculars anyway in the game, but you can use them. Um, yeah. All right, so let's get back out there. So the thing that we're going to do now is we're going to look at our lines again. Now, for those of you on the Switch, you're going to have to exit the port to do this, and then you're going to click on your line info. And you can see here your lines have been out there for three hours. We know it's a two-hour trip, so you have to do some math in your brain, and you have to get out the math part of your brain. And you're going to go back into port. Boop. And we're going to go ahead and look at the time. I need to pick those net up, nets up at 18 hours. So I know it's a two-hour trip. So if I wait 14 hours, it's going to get me out there at about 16 hours. Okay? I'm at three hours right now. Right? 17 hours, which is perfect. So we're going to skip 14 hours. Here I am. It's the next day. I am going to leave port with no baited lines because I can't afford them right now. I'll have to buy more later. I would expect that we get a semi-full ship. I don't know that we're going to get a full load, but we'll see. And we're going to let them know we're leaving. Off we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and fast travel. I think we have to wait. Eh. See, that one's already turning green, which means we're getting into that second range. You want it to be blue. The way that the the um, the beacons work, see, right now that's, okay, it just hit 18 hours and 47 minutes. It just turned blue. They start red, they turn yellow, they then turn green, and then they turn blue, and that's the best time to pull them. Then they turn green, and then they turn yellow, and if they go back to red, you're not going to catch any fish. If you wait even longer, the lines will eventually disintegrate and disappear. So uh, you want to catch them when they're blue, and that's where we have that's what we've done. We've come back to here, and the, they just turned blue. So let's go ahead and hop out and see where we are, we're at. That should be up there. It's kind of a foggy day. Okay, I see the lines right over here. There it is. And so we're going to go into our little mini game here. This is the, the fish whacking part that I was talking about. Once again, if you have that better fish whacker... Um, you'll get a bonus to how many fish or how big the fish are that you whack. You also get a bonus on 28% or more catch. Like the better, you, the, the better towards perfect that you whack them, the, the more fish you get. You'll see. You'll see. You've probably already done this if you played the game at all. So we're going to pull that line. Mouse, wait. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> it wasn't fast enough. I couldn't get my mouse to the button in time. Teach me to be patient. And we're going to haul this line in. Oh, good. Not great. Perfect. Perfect. Now, as the line sits out longer, you'll notice we had 13, 4 out of 13. And the bigger lines will be for like 4 out of 15, sometimes 4 out of 20. But the 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 longer you wait, the less there are available. So it'll be like 4 out of 9 out of 9 or, you know, it's number 6 out of 13. So we caught a plus 27, which is good. That's a perfect. That's a perfect. 37% more fish. So the better you are at this mini game, the better, the more fish you catch. Now, when we're done doing this, it's going to ask us to gut. I usually don't gut until I have all the fish on board. Uh, dang, not good enough. Now, here's a weird one. No cod. That's going to affect our numbers, too. Oh, wow. Yeah, I told you we weren't going to catch a good amount, and that time we really did not catch many fish. That's a bad catch right there. But, okay. That's why having the 500 line helps, too, because you, you pull more in. Usually what I do is I drop a 500 and a 250. So, this is going to be a stretch, man. Wow, that was just a bad catch. Not happy about that. But it happens, though. You know, the game is random, so 
You never know when you're going to get a uh, good catch or a bad catch. This time we just ended up getting crap. We're going to haul this long line. So even with my lots of perfects, it still wasn't enough. Oops. I messed that up. Oh, Arthur. Perfect. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, good. Man. Perfect. Good. <laughs> I used to be able to get all perfects, but I don't play this part of the game enough. I, I'm running some of the bigger ships, and you don't do the mini games once you get to the bigger ships. The crew does it for you. Oh. Right there. At least I didn't lose any. Uh. Perfect. Eh, 43%. Not bad. Now, this time we caught a couple cod, but not much. We're not going to gut yet. Let's take a look. Okay. Wow, we really caught nothing. That's horrible. That was a horrible haul. Just terrible. Well, what are you going to do? So you can see here on the right, the boat has four or three bars of fresh fish. God. Let's go ahead and gut them. Makes me want to cry. Gutting is a pain in the butt on the console. You're going to put the knife uh, here, and then you kind of work your way along the line. Amazingly, you don't have to go fast. You just have to stay on that line, which is harder to do than... than easier said than done. So far, four stars, I got 30% plus. That's not going to be a good gut because I missed the line. Once again, I missed the line. Wow, batting zero today. Man. So, plus 10%. Uh, look at that, though. So, now you can see they've turned yellow on the ship. <sighs> How sad. Well, let's go back to port. Uh, we're not going to be able to run our doubles yet. So, maybe we'll do that in the next episode. I'll show you how to do that because um, we're not getting any doubles right now or double lines. Nope, that's not what I want. Remove all waypoints. We're going up here. It's going up. Fast travel. That's some of the worst catches I've ever had. Just terrible. All right, well, what are you going to do? The grounds are definitely not teeming with fish, so. And we go to port. Let's see how much we made. Oh, it didn't show our journal. Did we sell the fish? What? We haven't sold any fish yet. What do you mean we haven't sold any fish? What? Try that again. Usually when you enter port, it automatically sells. I must have... Oh, I hit the wrong button. That's why. So we've made 11,000 krona. That's not bad, actually. Um, that's really not bad. So we need to bait our lines again, and we'll just keep doing that. So that's, that's the idea. But once again, we want to be able to do what's called staggered fishing. We'll go over that in the next tutorial because I feel like this tutorial has already run long enough. Um, we're almost at an hour now. So uh, hopefully you found all this information not overwhelming but useful. Uh, in the next episode, I will show you how to uh, go about doing uh, rotation fishing where we're going to drop lines, uh, go back home, uh, and then take more lines out. 
pick those lines up, get the fish, and drop the next set of lines, and we'll, we'll work on that. But I need to get enough money here together to purchase the 500-foot nets or lines. So I'll see you in the next one, and then we'll also cover uh, crew management, line shipping in a future tutorial. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this series so far. Have a great night. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up always help, and we'll see you next time on the tube. Bye.